Sounds great. We and, are uh, excited to hear what you have to share. Have you got it? Okay, everybody sees it. We so, can see it. You know, if you count discovery, I got you beat by the 40 years thing. I started, I was in the classroom in 1971. So that's how long it's been. I left to work in the library media. You, you see the bio here. I left to work in the library media services at, at my district. I became a county media director. Uh, I was on this first team that wrote the technology framework for the California School Media Library Association, which has been still around. And now I'm on a board because you're old, you get to be on boards. Uh, I'm on the California School Library Foundation Board and uh, Media Festival Board. And I've been with Discovery Education for about 19 years. And it's it's great people. It's a great team. It's a mission-driven group. It's uh, it's really, really uh, fun to be there. So uh, that that is me. And 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 although you saw a glimpse of a picture, let me just say they they asked for a picture of me uh, and was trying to make it interesting. They said, could you get one from the first yearbook where you were a faculty member? You know, your first pictures of faculty. So I, I got one and here here's what it is. It's it's yeah. um, uh, it's this one. And uh, I did I did have a beard back then. I did. It's true. And, uh, and I still got the glasses. Um but this is we did the yearbooks back then in um, in Mosaic. Uh, we didn't sell a lot of them, but they really held up well there and they were heavy. So I show you this, actually, because on the on the on the side of the screen, you see there a QR code uh, and, a, and a tiny URL that has all the references. It's got the slides that Karen used. It's got that great graph she did. It's got the link to the data that built the graph. So we don't have you for very long. Really want you to take away a lot of stuff. So there's an awful lot of material there. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, CTE and there's material there too. So uh, please uh, get a snapshot of that uh, QR code. It will take you to a Google Doc that has everything on it. So we like to think that that's a good thing. And and, and let me say that uh, when Karen said we're putting this together, I was just very excited to do this. Uh, and let me just say to all of you, you, your districts are lucky. Your schools are lucky. If you have a school librarian, that's a lucky group uh, because you're a person in a school that isn't bound to a single curriculum. You're not bound to a single class or group of classes. You can reach everybody and everybody can reach you. And that's a really, really uh, special position. And I've been in... Uh, one of the things I get to do in this job is travel a lot. And I've seen librarians that are absolute uh, libra libraries, libraries that are absolutely essential to the school, the space and the person. Uh, it's, and in many places, it's essential to the community. So the, the school library is something we really need to treasure and we really need to, to work on making sure that, that they're around. There, there's nothing that makes it clearer, the importance of library to me, than new information and new technology. Uh, uh, we, in putting this thing together, we said, you know, if it's scary, it's a great opportunity. And where do you go when you, when you need information and comfort? You go to a library. So that's that's really cool. And when you, uh, and I, oh, yeah, this picture was made in generative AI, by the way. So that's a plug for my session. We can learn to do this, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, I'll show you the prompt. But uh, two librarians whose kind of work I admire, one is Nicole Henning, and this is a book that she wrote. I've been talking about AI and librarians for five years, and this is one of the first books back in the day when AI just meant digital assistance. It's changed a lot. Um, but you see there that the idea is we really do want to move forward because we're serving users in a, in a very different way, and we never know what that's going to be unless we explore. Another librarian that I really... Uh, like and you, you may know her. Her her work is a a school librarian. Nicole was a was a, uh, a post secondary librarian. Was at the MIT librarian for a while, and now now was other places. Uh, but Casey Boyd is a middle school. Last I checked, middle school librarian, and she was a firm firm advocate that every school should have a library. And we all have to stand up and do that. Uh, it becomes more important. We can become essential, which is what we want to do. And I think that's that's the important part. But anyway, these are these are people that I think are, are kind of uh modeling what what we need to do in the new world of um uh, of uh of libraries and technology and a brief history of it is that you know when we started in libraries back in the day this is maybe even before me is we we were book centered we were book centered and i show you these pictures because i know a lot of you from new hampshire and this is the first this is the peterborough town library the first library in the united states to be owned and funded through taxation it's 1833 uh, the hard part here was finding the font that matched it, but th there it is, and they refurbished it, and it, it's all very cool. Uh, and that's that's sort of the way it looks now. We moved from print, you know, print, 1883, big deal print, a place to go, a place to read. Remember Lincoln and how 
how hard it was for Lincoln to get books. It was a big deal. We've moved into media for a long time. Media meant this. The first time that, that uh, uh, I was distributing media, these were film strips. Remember, some of you may, so if you, if you remember, put it in chat, but you can see some of the titles here. And remember, this slide is available. You can download it. But look, how to ride your bicycle safely, an uneasy post-war period. Anyway, these were all um, film strips that you put in a device and it rolled. And that's the way he did. So we had film strips and then film. Film was a very big deal. And you see film strips in the little box up there. Uh, the, the trouble with this wasn't, these were great. Um, and I still remember Donald Duck and Math Magic Land, that which made me really go into uh, my life as a math teacher. Uh, and that was a, we lowered the blinds, we did all that stuff, and that was the film. But where did we get the film? Uh, that was the issue. Uh, it was with a large district. We had a me media distribution center, and what that means is that if you wanted Donald Duck and Math Magic Land or anything else, you filled out a form. The form went on a truck. The truck went to the warehouse. The warehouse. Uh, they they put the whatever asset you asked for in a blue bag. The blue bag went back in a truck. The truck went back to a classroom where you uh, did what you needed to do with it. Uh, it then went back in the blue box and went back to the library and so and back to the warehouse. And that's the way that it all worked. So not great, but we had we were delivering to our users and to teachers and to students. Uh, a technology that I think really made a lot of difference in a lot of people's learning and maybe even their lives. It did for me. Uh, and then it all began to change. It, it changed with uh, with this. When this came into being, and, and again, this is the last century, but this is to me, this is a, a great kind of example of, of what we can do and the importance of library. This meant uh, several things are really important. One, it was not only an asset, but it was a new way to teach with media. So I, I heard this more than once. A teacher would say, the pause button has changed my life. Because if you taught art or math or history and you used a VCR, it's like you we showed, you'll laugh, but in the old days, the pause button. People go, oh my God, we can stop and talk about stuff. Because remember in the old days with film, if you paused it, it caught on fire. That was that was what film did. So this was, this was a really, a really big deal. It also meant that you could have closed captions, which was huge. And it meant you could develop an on-site media library. And this is one of the keys. By the way, uh, my master's thesis was looking at schools that had video libraries, compare them the size of the library with the test scores. And if you take factor at everything else, it turns out the more media assets you had, the higher your test scores were. Uh, we did this in, for the state of California. Anyway, you could have, instead of sending out to the trucks, you could have a huge media library in your school. But to do that, it meant somebody had to learn how to use the VCR. Somebody had, this device only delivered stuff if you had the stuff in the first place. So lots of workshops went around showing people how to set the VCRs. And we had a deal with our PBS station so we could get the media rights. And if you could record Reading Rainbow, for example, between midnight and 2 a.m., you could build your own library, legit library of Reading Rainbow, which was very cool. Uh, it meant you could use it the way you wanted. You could chapter it, right? You could fast forward to the part you wanted. So this was a very big deal. But the key to that, at least in my state, was the school librarian and the library, because they're the ones that learned how to set that VCR moving. It also meant, by the way, that kids could now create content. You couldn't really make film, but boy, you could get those big stupid camcorders and you could make your own content or you could audio dub a, a, a show into your own language. All those things we cleared the rights for and had a good time. But the key to making that transformation was the library because nobody else knew what to do with that device. Now that that's analogous to me of artificial intelligence, talk about that later, but it meant that once you've learned it, that material could leave without going on a truck, without filling out a form, it could go with these special, you know, these uh, select kids could go out and and, and distribute it to, to classrooms. Because in those days, the, a VCR was the equivalent of about four grand in today's dollars. So you could, schools had them, but boy, you kept them in a central place. All that changed very quickly, of course. And I will say that the thing that used, to, and I looked really hard to find the original of this, but the little warning that used to be on the side of that cart, because if the cart went over a hill, it bumped, it could fall over and hurt somebody. So the first warning was done by the Library Media Center. And, and it was, a, 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 we used to paste those on things, but we designed that out here. And I wish I could find it. Somebody can find it and send me the original. I would, would love to have it. But again, 
that was all central to the, the role of a person in a school who gathered information, resources, and could send it out. And that's still true. Now, the whole industry, of course, began slipping in about 2009. Uh, people began distributing their, their district uh, videotapes out to individual schools, which is kind of cool, too. So in this, in this, this evening, this, this event that we have, we've got things that I think are doing both of those things. It's, it's creating leadership. It's also talking about how to use technology and resource tools in ways that weren't done before. So yeah, that sort of broke them up in a bunch of a bunch of different ones. And you can see which are leadership, which are resource tools. But it's really hard not to have both. If you're gonna, if you make the commitment to be, become the artificial intelligence hub or the uh, the CTE or the critical media resource resource person, then you become a leader to do that. And that's that's really essential. And when you do that, the library becomes more and more and more essential. And that's what we hope the takeaway will be. So we're going to give you lots and lots of resources. And uh, that's why we have that doc so you can have those. So about two minutes all. Uh, two minutes. Okay. A couple other things. One, uh, and this is just a summary. One of the tools of Discovery Education's experience, it has more assets than now we're in the Peterborough, Peterborough Town Library. How are you going to use 200,000 assets? You need someone to be able to help you do that. And that's a librarian's role. AI, the prompt library, it's a VCR kind of situation. And when I think of libraries, this is one of my two favorite places on this planet is this. And if you recognize it, go ahead and put it in the chat. But this is a, a wonderful, wonderful place. Uh, here's my library card for it. Uh, you'll, you, you can see that uh, it's expired. And my, my picture is so bad, it looks like I've expired, but I haven't. This is the Library of Congress. Yes, thank you, LOC, the Library of Congress. And when I think of it, I think of all the kids. When the, the asset, you know, they don't house it there. They send stuff in and out. I mean, it's for the Congress, but they send it out through a tunnel so a, anybody can get the resource that they need. And to me, that's really a cool thing. So in, in California, our foundation uh, put out a challenge on the importance of school libraries. And uh, it was a challenge for a student to make a video uh, about the importance. And I'm gonna just show you a little bit of it. And then Karen, you tell me when to pull the plug, but th this was the winner. And I shortened this a little bit, but here's, this was made by a student to talk about the importance of a school library. School libraries, students often take them for granted. So you may be asking, why are they so great? Well, my friend, I'm here to tell you about just that. <laughs> Research shows that providing K through 12 students with a library staffed by a certified librarian enhances test scores, reading ability, and information literacy. With this, we arrive to the main advantage of school libraries. Strong school libraries build strong students. This Bernie Trilling, the global director of the Oracle Education Foundation, summed us up nicely when he stated, school libraries are essential learning resources and librarians are the essential guides inside our schools, leading everyday teaching and learning towards methods and outcomes that best prepare our students for the challenges of the 21st century. The next time you ask the question, what's the point of a school library? Just know about all the great benefits associated with it. So isn't that great to hear from a student? Uh, so I would say put out that challenge. Say here it is, the importance of school libraries. Uh, let us know and see what see what comes out. There were that was the winner, but there were some really really fun ones in there too. That's anyway, awesome. Thanks, That's awesome. thanks, Hall. That that is amazing. You're right. There is nothing like like hearing from students. I mean, just absolutely amazing. And you know, also you just shared so much about the the opportunity you know that that our librarians can bring in terms of you know the a change in education you know we really really need that because you know there's so much that is changing and that we we need help figuring out what that what that change looks like so we are going to uh go to uh, looking at our sessions that are coming up. All right. So Hall, if you want to stop sharing so Nancy can reshare, that would be great. And so remember that you're going to uh, go to this uh, page, the bit.ly page. Now, listen, if you had gone there before on the, when I had put this link up previously, refresh your page. 
because uh, we had a problem with one of the links. So we had to do some changing. So make sure you go and refresh your change. We'll put that in the um, in the chat. We put that link there. And so let me give you kind of an overview of the sessions. Um, we have fostering librarians as leaders, supporting the science of reading, the effective use of experience in the library. Hall is going to do a session on AI, which is, again, great follow up to some of the info he just shared. Opening classroom doors with curiosity and innovation. We're going to focus in on some great CTE resources and then essential skills for critical media literacy. Now, these sessions each will run twice. The first session will start at 6.30 and we'll go till seven o'clock. Then we'll have a five minute break and then you can go back to that page again and uh, pick your second session with, um, with that link. And then that second session will go till um, 7.35 and then we'll come back to this, um, this page or sorry, this Zoom link um, to close out for the last 20 minutes. And so that will be at 740. That will start. So again, pick your breakout session. 630 it starts, goes till seven o'clock, five minute break. Pick your second session, 30 minutes, and then come back here at 740. We will leave this, um, this room open in the event that you have any questions, you can come back here. Shay will be here. She can help and support. So go to your page. Make sure, you, again, you refresh it. And then we'll see you in your session in four minutes. Thanks, everyone.